a bit of a special one, this diary, because we are at the wonderful Rainbow. Absolutely buzzing for this one. It's actually been a couple of years since I've been here on one of these two week trips. Obviously I was here with Little and back in May, only for a week trip, but this is the one that I normally do. Miss last year's one due to the fires they had out of here, which was devastating, but we're back, yes. So, oh man, this should hopefully be a good trip. We are on the island for the next two weeks and bloody hell am I looking forward to it man really looking forward to it so here with Paul he's on the left <laughs> I'm on the right and uh, I've not fished the right hand side of the island since I had thousand scale last I believe which was a good four years ago and 71 pounder out of uh, the right hand side so yeah really really looking forward to it so we've got to now get these boats loaded get out to that island we've been lucky enough to get onto the pond a couple of hours earlier than normal which is nice we stayed in a campsite last night had a good sleep apparently there was a thunderstorm that me and him know absolutely nothing about <laughs> so <laughs> we were dead to the world so yeah looking forward to it right that van is proper loaded you wouldn't get a rizzler paper in there and uh it's time to get all our kit out into the boats and onto the island. Come on. Oh, so here we go then. Oh, this boat is dodgy. It is loaded to the bloody hills and it's wobbling all over the place. I'm worried it's going to tip over. Let's hope it doesn't. Oh, the state of it. It's proper loaded. Not ideal. <sighs> sketchy, sketchy ride over, right? Bloody concentrate. Hope you get across this pond in one piece. This goes over, trip over. Oh, it's me bloody vape. <laughs> mate. That's, that's the one there. flat as well, isn't he? Yeah. Look. I think he had a 72, mate. Oh, if I absolute bloody giant. Well done, man. Right then. God, I can't believe what's just happened, to be honest with you. So, I've got everything set up. The old cook tent, bivy set up, rods are sweet. All sorted here. Um, I'll explain probably tomorrow where the rods are going because we're losing the light. But Paul's just had a 70 pounder. <laughs> 70. <laughs> Unbelievable. Down this channel to the left. It was a really good for rod for me when I was last on the island on the left hand side. And uh, yeah, he's just, well, he was out in the boat and um, the rod hoops over, lent into it, and I'm pulling it back. I thought, this is a good one. This is a proper good and definitely. And he's going, just reel it in, you land it. And I'm like, no, nah, mate, nah, there, there's, without a shadow of a doubt, this is a giant. So um, I'm so glad I didn't reel it in. So he's caned it back to the bank, gone down to his left hand channel, and landed a bloody 70, would you believe? Unbelievable. What a start to the trip. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So. Yeah, I'm gonna drop my thousand scale rod out now, get that out before it gets dark. And then like I say, I'll explain tomorrow what's going on and, and what have you. Pretty much, I'm probably gonna fish this right hand rod on a gap in the bar there. There's a spot just out here, I've dropped a H block. You might not be able to see it, you might be able to, but I'm gonna bait out here and maybe rotate this rod or rotate the left hand rod because the next one in is going right up the back there, it's a long way to the old thousand scale spot in one of the channels. Then the next rod along here, this one, is gonna go the other side of the sticks, somewhere out in that swimming pool area. I do know of a zone out there, but I'm gonna to have to keep that one on the down low really, because um, someone else told me about it, had giants from it, so it's his spot. 
<clears throat> gonna keep it on the down low. And then this left hander is gonna be in front of these sticks that run out here. There's a bar that runs out, it's got all sticks on it. But yeah, there's a lot of bars in and out from here to sort of halfway out. So that rod's gonna go up on top of one of the bars because Paul's gonna fish the gullies on the other two. So we we'll both sort of suss out what's going on and how they're sort of traveling through this area. But oh, I'm absolutely buzzing for Paul getting that one straight away. 70 pound a first bite, 10 minutes of the rod being in the water. You couldn't write it. Mega, right, let's get out of there. Let's get these rods dropped and see the night in, I guess. Mental. Right, so first rod ready to be dropped. So this is the thousand scale spot. That's where I'd had him from, but it's a foot deep. Water's really down. So because of these divs here, the old ducks, I'm gonna have to come slightly deeper. So I'm just out of this channel. That there is the back of 19 that is really snaggy in there. They can't get to that area whatsoever because it's mentally snaggy in there, but they like living in there and they sort of come out through here. And then when you get them come through the channel into 16, so 16's over the back there, which you would have seen on a couple of diaries ago. That's the channel that runs through into this water. So just spraying a few 18 millers about sort of. Hansel and Gretel in them along here in case some of them do come through here. But yeah, this is um this has done me well and uh they did me boss Jace well in here. He had a 69 pounder out of this zone. So yeah, it's a good little zone this. I'm just gonna fish this side of the float to a pole and then back to the bank. So I don't know whether to fish a bottle or not it's nice to know with the bottle where where the fish is going from the swim so but oh, i'm a little unsure i might fish it without to start with and then if i get any problems i'll stick a bottle on but yeah, for the meantime I'm just gonna chuck a few baits about the place I'm not gonna put a lot in It's a mix of 22 mil switch and 18 millers. So I'm not gonna fill it in on this one. Just spray a few about a bit. Probably about 50 odd baits. That should do him. Right. And then yeah, just double lead in the old bollocks rig. So would have seen that before. The old bollocks rig, 12 ounce lead, six ounce lead the other side. All that jazz. So let's, uh, let's get him in the pond, shall we? Oh. It's not the easiest to do. With these little rods, I'm using my 10 foot TIs at the minute, but it's not bloody ideal. Normally I've got the 13 footers, which makes life a lot easier. Throwing the old double lead out, so anyway. There we go. Pick me H block up and away we go, as easy as that. Yeah, look, that's the depth, not very deep at all. So, deep enough for a giant, hopefully. See, I know I used to put a pole in there, sort of from the bank, come round the pole, but don't think there's going to be any need to because I'm out of the channel a bit. I was normally a little bit more in the channel, but yeah, I don't think I'll need to on this one. 
Right, jobs are good in. First rod dropped. Back to the bank. So yeah, this will go from here into a hook and then back towards the swim. That hook that I just put in earlier on, so sorted. We are finally fishing. It's like one o'clock Sunday. Obviously started yesterday, Saturday, long evening. Uh, I managed to get two rods out at the very least. The one right up the back, which is the old thousand scale spot. Put that one out because obviously I know the area, but the water's down so much that I can't actually fish exactly where I'd add him from because it's a foot deep. So I've had to come out of the channel a little bit. One of them things, um, I managed to put the right hand rod out as well. So did that one late last night. I actually put a halo pole out there because I baited it quite heavily. Now there's a gap that runs through the bar here. So you've got the bar that runs through and it dips down and then it comes back up to the other bar, which is that island that you can see in the background just over there. You might be able to see it, you might not. Today's been a case of just finding spots for the other two, really. I'm really happy with this rod that's just here. I was told about a spot that a certain area out there and um, I spent absolutely hours upon hours trying to find this zone and finally I managed to find it. And um, yeah, I've marked that with a halo pole as well all i'm basically doing is fishing bollocks rigs on all of them one of them though the one that i had the bream on i'm actually using a hook bait that kev the lead showed me bless him he i promised him that i wouldn't show anyone it but he said if you get breamed out try this and he's never had a fish under 50 pound on it so i said to him i'll keep his secret and i'll obviously keep that for him He's probably looking down at me thinking, don't tell anyone, Moss. <laughs> Which I won't. I, I'll, I'll honour him that. So, fingers crossed if that one goes. That'd be nice. It'll be a nice little touch that will, definitely. I really miss speaking to Kev. Oh, hello. Something just showed in the background here. Beauty. Um... Yeah, really miss speaking to Kev. Oh, we always used to have a natter for hours upon end before we used to come out to these trips, but yeah, he sadly died um, unexpectedly as well. And he's he's missed, let me tell you, he's really missed. So so yeah, with the, um, with the left hand rod, that one there, just put it out on one of the top of the bars. Me and Paul were sort of working together with, um, with these rods in the fact that he's fishing one gully and then two gullies back and I'm fishing on top of the bar in between the two just to see whether the fish are running through the gullies or not or whether they're running across the top of the bars this side of the stick between sort of you sort of basically you can cut this swim in half that's the swimming pool area that I call up the back there where, where I've got my thousand scale rod and obviously that spot that I found which took hours we'll name that spot something as the trip goes on I'm sure and where was I going? Yeah, and, and this area is sort of obviously this side of the stick. So between the island in the background there and the little island over the left there, they um, that's quite a shallow bar that runs through there. I mean, now you've got to lift the prop of the engine to get bloody over it. So it's a bit of a pain in the ass if one of them long rods go. But, you know, it's part rainbow, I guess. We're settled now, we're sorted. We've got a bit of rain that's meant to be coming um, in the next hour or so. We've got a few storms on its way. It's been red hot as well, so we could really do with it. But yeah, you'll have to excuse the state of me. I'm a, I'm a right bloody mess. It's been a long 24 hours, that's for sure. So, whew, right, we can chill out now, have a beer, watch the Formula One, see how Arsenal get on against Everton. Right, okay. Getting it. 
Hang on a minute. I need to get in this side. Come on, I'm gonna have to do me Peter Pan moment. <sighs> He's got you got one, mate. I'm like, this is fucking this dip. <laughs> Fucking alarm fuels don't make any noise. Wow, fucking hell, they've given up the ghost, mate. Oh. Right, well, we are now a week and a half, well, week and a half, week and two days into the trip. And, uh, to say it's been a struggle is an understatement. Let me tell you, it has been absolutely bloody gruelling. We're 44 brems deep, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, my plateau rod's gone. Mental. Right, let's get out of there. I'm in between a lot of lines here, so. We're playing one. I just got to get the other side of these sticks here. Man's played a carp pole. <laughs> well, I, I forgot what the bloody do, to be honest with you. I know. This will be three years in the making, this. It's actually been like three years since I've played a bloody rainbow carp. But we're playing one. Right, let's get him around that side of the boat. Because I don't want to get near it pulls lines here. Oh, I can't believe it. We're bloody playing one. Jesus. This has been a long time coming. Yeah, sweet ear, yeah? Happy days. God, I can't bloody believe it. We're actually playing a bloody rainbow carp. I say this has been a long time coming, definitely. Right near me other line there. It's going the right way. Gonna move that plateau rod as well, won't I? <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> Paul's, Paul's come out to rescue me, bloody float. 
I did see the line bike going up and down. I don't know why the alarm didn't it. Well, the alarms are tired. They're just like, we're done in by the amount of brems we've bloody had. Just keep an eye, make sure I don't wipe out any of your rods because I'm in between like four bloody rods here at the minute. Toward the, to my right. All right. Okay. <sighs> my right ear. Come right slightly. All my like here. Next busted. I have no pole. <laughs> no, I'll be alright. I'll be alright. What am I like here? Back that way, yeah. I don't know. I'm bloody seeing him. Just don't want to wipe out any bloody lines at the minute. I'm gonna to have to hand net him in. I've got that, <laughs> I've got that of the net. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'll be all right. Doing me vape, I know that. <sighs> yeah, he is a good one. Man, 
get this echo on, see where these fucking bars are. No. I'll slip this on anyway. This has been nearly three years since I've had a bloody rainbow carp, so I really want to get this in the net. And the fact I ain't got a net pole to get him in the net is not ideal. It's just busted off. Cool, yeah. He's a big old common him. Between bloody eight rods here. One. Oh no, I've hooked that line. Shit, shit, shit. <sighs> oh, he's right under that other line. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Definitely do. <sighs> Fucking hell. I may have may not mentioned on the old 
GoPro, it's been a tough week. It really has been a tough, a tough bloody week. Not only for myself, but Paul as well. Paul started off with that giant at the start of the trip. Um, for some reason, the fish just aren't in here. There's been a lot of empty pegs, so maybe that's the reasonings why the fish have vacated out the island swim. But we've persevered and what are we in? One week, two days, been nearly bloody three, two weeks since I've had a rainbow carp and nearly three years. That puts it into perspective how bloody difficult this place can be at times. But there we go. We finally, finally got one. Oh, absolutely amazing. A smidgen under 50 pounds and I can't begin to tell you how much this fish means to me because it's been a long time since I've had a rainbow carp in my arms so to get this one means the most out of all of them that I've been lucky enough to catch out of here because you put it into perspective when you think catch them all the time out of rainbow but when you're struggling and you get ones like this in your arms they definitely mean the most. Amazing. Right, let's get some pictures and send him on his merry way. Wicked. <laughs> Thank you, you diamond. Oh God, an amazing carp. Wow. And away he goes. <laughs> I've got one, Paul. It didn't take him three years, but I've got one. <laughs> Oh, wicked. 